Hello, my friend, and welcome to the 433rd episode of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today we have Nick Francis. He is the author of The New Fire, owns casual films. This dude drove from London to Mongolia in a Mini Cooper, and he picked the Mini Cooper on purpose so it would break down. So he had more stories to tell. So he was doing this thing. Video diaries for Expedia way back in 2006. So in you know internet and video marketing terms, that might as well have been the dark ages. And it's kind of why he and how he came up with the title, The New Fire. You know, it's like handing fire to cavemen, right? Video is the new fire. We get into, you know, how your customers uh, can give you key insight on your story, uh, how to go deep, how to illustrate that you care. So uh, a lot of cool things we cover in this. So you will want to pay attention. And speaking of attention, pay attention to the end. I've got a new announcement on something I'm working on, and uh, you can be the first to hear it here. But first, let's go hear what Nick has to say. Nick Francis all the way from London via San Francisco. Welcome to the Sales Podcast, man. How the heck are you? I'm great, Wes. Thanks so much for having me today. So casual film. So did you really did you really drive halfway across the world? What in a was it a Volkswagen bus? No, it was it was an old mini like out of the old uh, Michael Caine Italian job. Like a Mini Cooper? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we we bought it off some good. friends in London and uh, it just broke down all the way uh, from London <laughs> to Mongolia. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'll let you, you, you said it. So I've heard like that. They're not so, not so reliable. Yeah. I mean, this one, it was beautiful. Like they'd really looked after the sort of, you know, the, the, all the panels and, and the seats and stuff, but the engine was horrible. And uh, yeah. Well, they say be- beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone, right? Yeah. So this, you, you found out ugly is all the way to the transmission and the engine block. Uh, and absolutely. Else. Yeah. Ugly to the axles. So, um, <laughs> so we'll get into what you do, but I mean, you were a journalist, right? Mm-hmm. And how, how did being a journalist lead to driving to Mongolia and why Mongolia? Why Mongolia? Okay. So I guess when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a photojournalist because I loved the idea of being able to experience life lived at the edge. And I wanted to be a war photographer, um, which is probably for the best. That isn't the route that I ended up going down. Um, uh, but I, I've always been interested in the world and in, in people, I guess. And um, uh, I started, I studied television journalism. Um, and then a friend of mine and I from uni, uh, we had always said we were going to do this rally from London to Mongolia. And the idea is that you have it, you do it in an old car. So you break down, you have an adventure. Um, you, want it, you want it to break down. Yeah, that was kind of the idea. I mean, you're supposed to, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but you're supposed to look at it and go, that car's a bit crap. So that, that's, is, is that okay to say? Um, so yeah, so because um, then the idea is, yeah, you break that down and then you have to try and find someone in Northern Turkey who can um, replace your head gasket on a, on a car that they've never seen before, or rather they'd only seen it in, in uh, Mr. Bean. Um, but anyway, sort of cut to the chase. We, we made a series of video diaries for Expedia, the travel website. This was back in 2006. Um, it was just after YouTube was founded. So nobody really thought of the internet as a medium for video. Um, And we came back, we had this great client. Uh, We had a bit of money left over and some cameras and stuff. And we thought, well, you know, if we can make films for a company like Expedia, then we can do it for anyone. Um, And the company grew from there. We won a few awards, which really helped us to kind of put a stake in the ground. Um, And then opened up in the US in 2011. um, And then on the West Coast in 2017. So yeah, we're now London, New York, LA. Um, I'm based in San Francisco. We've got about 50 staff um, and we work with brands from uh, Red Bull through BMW, uh, GoDaddy, Facebook, um, Marriott Hotels, you name it. You know, if you play your cards right, one day you may be able to say the, you know, the sales whisper is a client, but I mean, you got to behave yourself though. Let's well, see how I get on. <laughs> see how I get on. <laughs> so- so, man, I don't know where to take this, either um, how to help our listeners land big clients, or maybe we can talk about how to use video to tell their story to then maybe land big clients. How about sure. that route? Sure. Um, so I guess, like, the reason I wrote my book um, was I was, I went in a pitch to the marketing department of a big 
um, global brand um, based out of Switzerland. And there were 40 people in the room and I t showed up and they told me all these stories. They've got some amazing, um, you know, pet, pet food retailer um, amongst other things. And they, they have people bringing their pets into the office. They take pets into hospitals to, so that kids can, who are convalescing can kind of have the experience of, of uh, being in pro close proximity to animals. Um, and uh, they weren't able to tell any of these stories. And they said, look, you know, Nick, like, yeah, we agree with you. We should, these are exactly the stories we should be telling to communicate and to really build that engagement with our audience. But our bosses say, no, it ha we have to lead with a brand. We have, to, we have to have the housewife saying, you know, I always choose this pet food because it, you know, Fido loves it. Um, and it just felt so fake and so old, you know, it's crazy that, you know, you sort of think that we're like, we live in this world where everyone's so tech savvy and video savvy and they just, they just weren't. And, and, and it's not the practitioners who are having the challenges. It's the people who sign the bills um, at the level above them. So I wrote the book to try and so that they would have something to give to the finance director or, you know, whoever was holding the purse strings to say like, this is why video works. Yeah, you you see it all the time. Uh, was, isn't there a joke or even like a video, like make the logo bigger? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, can you just make the logo bigger? Can you just, yeah, I, I think we should move it one hexadecimal, one one pixel, yeah, a little bit more orange. You know, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but and but that has, has propagated uh, forever. I see people every time when I help them with Infusionsoft, HubSpot, whatever, they're doing their emails. Boom, the first thing you see is their logo in this email. I'm like, dude, why are you doing that? Mm. They don't understand, right? They think, oh, I got to tell them who I am. I'm like, no, you got to help them solve a problem. Yeah. If you help them solve the problem, they will move heaven and earth to find out who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think right? it was, yeah, I think Eleanor Roosevelt said, um, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think ultimately, if you're leading with your logo, you're saying, "Hey, this is all about me." Yeah. Um, right. And I think one of the, you know, the most important things, particularly, you know, there's, there's so much noise online. Everyone's so distracted. Everyone's so attention poor um, that you really have to like understand who your audience are, do the work to understand what's what's firing them, and then create very specific stories to to, to touch them. Uh, and that's where video really can stand out. Like, you know, I sort of like to say that it kind of, everyone's heads are just so befuddled by <laughs> the, do you guys say befuddled over here? Uh, hey, you know what? We, we are a, a very astute, uh, educated, erudite uh, uh, listenership. Okay. And, and we have, <laughs> and we have Google. Hey Siri, what, what does that mean? Okay. Uh, yeah. Everyone's just so confused <laughs> by, uh, by just the, you know, the, 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 the onslaught. <laughs> Oh, there we go. <laughs> My hey, Siri. <laughs> you can't, you can't, no, leave me alone. You can't even whisper. No, I know. I know they're listening every, all the they're time. They're listening all the time. Oh, well, yeah. as I was saying, right, before I so rudely interrupted you, please continue. Um, it, it, it allows you to reach beyond people's heads, confused heads, over stimulated heads, and, and reach their heart. Right. Um, you know, it can, it can just, it can just stop, uh, people in their tracks if, if it's if you get it just right um, and that's sort of what people should be trying to um really trying to look for i sort of talk a bit about like the the the, the magnifying glass method um, and i guess what i mean by that is like um if you think about do you, do you remember the tiananmen square protests sure. sure um you know and there's like these protests are going on for weeks and you know there's thousands of column inches written about it and then this one guy stands up and then the, they send the tanks in and this one guy stands there um, and they just get a photo of him. And it's like one student and there's like three or four tanks rolling into the square and he stands there and he stops them. And it's like the power of that image is just so much greater than all the other column inches uh, combined. And I think as a, as a communicator, if you think about like a video, like uh, the Apple 1984, um, film where you have you have the girl running in and she you know and, and they're all the sort of automaton sort of 1984 george orwell 1984 type characters watching big brother on the screen she runs in with a hammer and throws it at the screen and smashes it it's like it, that sort of 
perfectly encapsulates that Apple think different mantra. Um, and although think different came a few years later, like ultimately as communicators, we're trying to look for like, what is that, that sort of that perfect encapsulation of what our offer is, of what our idea is. And if you can find that, then you can punch through any noise, um, any, uh, you, you can, you can make, you can pause people's thumbs. We always talk about like, you know, people are there just scroll, 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 scroll. It's like, how do you stop that thumb? And if you can find that moment, if you can find that image, then you can do that. And that's sort of what we should aim to be doing with your video. Well, I, I agree. It's, it's hard though. I mean, that, that video, 1984, right. Came, um, it was big production, right? Mm -hmm. These were experts. This Apple was already a well-known company, uh, mm -hmm. hundreds of millions, of billions of dollars in sales, whatever. Um, but there's a lot of planning, right? There's uh, what do you call it? You got a storyboard it. You got to build out your persona. Who's this going for? What's the message we want? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot that goes into this. And, and I think that's what's daunting to so many people. Yeah. Um, you know, sp certainly entrepreneurs, smaller businesses, and so they just don't even start. Yeah. You know, should, should they just turn on their iPhone and their, their, their web cam and just start going live and just start getting accustomed to putting their face out there? I mean, how, how does a smaller business even start doing video right? Of course. So, I mean, it's such an overused word, but if you can just really be authentic, uh, and uh, like, and, and what I mean by that is just do what you can to strip away your, strip away the ego, strip away the brand, strip away uh, the uh, your logo, and make it about you and what and how. Or, sorry, not about you, but about how about your understanding of the challenges that your audience are facing. Um, so. For example, um, we did a film for um, uh, it was a, a, a big uh, uh, insurance firm, and uh, and I'll, I'll come on to the entrepreneur bit in a second because I think, but I, but I think this is sort of this is instructive is that um, they had the, the, their car insurance. They wanted to, like people live family lives when they're in the back of a car. You know, family life happens in the car together. And they were trying to sell it as like by providing car insurance, they allow family life to happen. Um, and they hired a big ad agency in London and they spent a couple of million US on it. And it was just, it was just, it, you could just feel it. It was scripted, all the, there were actors in it. It was just so fake. And then they came to us and they said, well, look, we want to do like a, a Facebook activation for this. Um, and we said, okay, well, like, let's just strip away everything, strip away, the like big name director, strip away the expensive cameras, strip away everything so you just have the family in the car. Um, and then we'll have, we'll, we'll set up some GoPros. So we film it all, we'll film it, record, monitor it remotely. And then we just had the director was on a mic into the, the dad's ear or the mum's ear and we'd just say subjects for them to talk about. So it might be like talk about the safari that they were, the safari park they went to or when they first brought the baby home. And they just talk to the kids and then the kids, and it was just so genuinely real because everything was stripped away. So like, I think if you're an entrepreneur and you've got, you, you got a small business, like you shouldn't feel like, Oh, you know, I have, I got, have I got the budget, you know, I'm not going to have like, you know, the, you know, big lighting setups and really expensive cameras. If you can just like do the work to understand who your audience are and then, try and understand like what the, where you, the product that you offer best serves them. And then just, and, and just, and then explain like, you know, find ways of, of explaining around that point of how you can help them. Is that, does that make sense? I still feel like a little bit like a kind of right. feeling around in the dark there, but like, but it's, it's just, it's that nub of like, yeah, where's the point between their need and requirement and your, the way that you can help them bring them together and just be sort of strip away the artifice. Right. Yeah. How does somebody know though? Cause there's, cause they will hire an expert. Well, that company hired an expert, mm. right? They hired a professional company. 
Yeah. And wasted millions. Yeah. And you know, you get a, you get a small business. I mean, if they wasted 20 grand, if they wasted five grand, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt. If yeah. They waste 20 grand. It may put them out of business. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, but I hired an expert. Well, the expert was an idiot. How, how, am I, how was I supposed to know? You know, they made other good stuff. You know, how could, how could somebody sort through these so-called gurus, mm. you know, or, or should they just try to do some of their own and kind of see what resonates and then maybe find someone that can accelerate, accelerate or enhance mm. what they're already doing. I, so it's remarkable how many businesses don't talk, you know, people don't talk to your, their customers enough. You have a sort of, you have an idea, you kind of think, oh, well, you know, there's that, there's that, there's that uh, lady I had lunch with her last week and she said she liked this, or this guy said he liked that. And, but like to actually do, put the time into talk, like find who, you know, who are your top five clients and talk to them and under like, you know, what, what is the problem that you solve for them? You know, why do they come to you and not? you know, the other people, you know, because they, they'll be having their doors knocked down all the time by other people. So it's like, what is it about their relationship with you? Is it, is it because you're absolutely dependable? Is it because your staff always go the extra mile and, and do the work to understand what, you know, what, what's the smallest number of people who absolutely love you and why do they love you? And then that's what you want to be storytelling around. Um, I had a, um, we, did, we used to do this business networking when we used to, when we first set the company up and we were talking about what is good client service and everyone's going around. They're like, well, you know, it's being able to answer the phone in, in three rings and all the rest of it. And it's it sort of sitting there and it just felt like we weren't really quite nailing it. And I said, okay, this is what I think. And I, you know, I'm not just saying this, I don't mean to say this to kind of to brag, but just because I think it sort of, it really shows the power of stories is that, I said, well, what I think good client service is, you know, we got a phone call the other day from a client. It was four o'clock in the afternoon. She had a big pitch nine o'clock the next morning and the team who was supposed to have made the video for her hadn't delivered it. So she rings me up and she said, and we'd had a good relationship with her. She goes, Nick, I'm really stuck. I need this video. And I said, I tell you what, if, if, it, if it's doable, we will do it. And we worked, I pulled two or three people together. We worked till two o'clock in the morning. We delivered the film. She then got in, did the pitch at 9 a.m. the next morning, she won the pitch and she rang me up and she was like, that was the most amazing thing that has happened. And I, and, and, and I said to the group, that's what I think good client service is. And anyway, it, well, about well, I agree. And, but let's, it, ideally good client service would be that first company not leaving them hanging. Of course. Right. Course, and and we can all, we can all rise up in the moment and, and get stuff done. Mm. Um, but was it the original company's fault? Did they over promise? What was, was the, the client, were they just too demanding in the beginning and maybe the other company undercharged, mm. you know, and now you're like, Oh my gosh, I regret taking this client on. I mean, there's all these things. And then like, how do you, in a push like that, do mm -hmm. you charge a premium to save the day or do you charge a discount because they're in a tight spot? Mm. Like how, you know, what so, do you do? Well, so, so they, did have, they did have some money to throw at it. So, you yeah. know, yes, we did charge a bit of a premium. But I guess I, the, 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 the real point of the story is that about six, eight months later, I was at an event and... Um, I just got met, bumped into, you know, introduced to someone and he goes, Oh, hey, Nick. Yeah. Oh, I know you. You're the guy who's really good at client service. And I was like, what the hell? Uh, you know, and it was because if I'd said, Oh yeah, I think good client service is, you know, it's answering the phone and always being there and da, 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 da. Then it, it, it's just whew, would have gone straight over his head. But because I told this story, it's sort of, it makes it so much more sticky. Um, the information becomes more sticky and he, you know, so now I'm the client service guy. I mean, you know, I don't, like, yes, of course, we work hard at good client, you know, you know, we all try to do our best to be good at client service and to look after the people who trust us. But, you know, I wouldn't, you know, it was just that because it was told in story form, it made the information so much stickier. Right. Um, well, how, you know, I like to pick a chiropractor as my example in mm -hmm. my interviews because yeah. 
I think in a way that it could be hard to sell. There's a lot of chiropractors, some people love it, some people hate it. Insurance doesn't always cover it. Some people got to pay cash and sometimes they got to spend a lot of money to really get the, the care that they need. So mm. how does a chiropractor tell this story? Cause I know people are listening. They're always want to troubleshoot things yep. or, or, yep. um, you know, sniper. Oh, it won't work for me because yes, sure. You know, sure. So, so chiropractors know, not pulling people out of burning buildings you know, usually it does take months, maybe a year to get somebody, but they, they avoid surgery. They get them off of pain mm -hmm, meds, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a little bit of a, maybe a longer grueling story. Yeah. So this, this is where you have to go back to your clients and, you know, in amongst your top 10 clients, you know, you could, you could go on the website and have a look, you know, who, who, who's left a good review or who have you talked to, you know, because your clients, like if, if you, you know, let's say you've got this, there's a lady who, um, you know, she's got a bad back. She hasn't been over to bend over and pick her toddler up and give her a cuddle for like two years because she's got terrible, terrible back pain. And then you fix it. And so now that mum can pick up her little girl and give her a hug. And it's like, and that's, that's what you do. You know, and you just want to like, and so when I sort of talk about kind of removing the artifice, it's like, you don't like, that it's, it's, it's like great cooking is just about good ingredients. Like that's just a great story. So you just, you just tell it like you could, you know, you could tell it on an iPhone, you know, so, right. but the, but, but the work there is in finding the story. Yeah. You know, like you could get Steven Spielberg to come down and shoot that. And frankly, it would probably be less impactful because yeah. it would feel less, less authentic. Well, that's what I tell people when they come to me for help with their marketing and copywriting. I'm like, look, man, at my core, I'm like an investigative journalist. Mm. I was like, I'm going to grill you and I'm going to grill you and we're going to pour some, some whiskey and we're, I'm going to grill you some more. I'm going to pour some more whiskey. <laughs> Sounds like a good grilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch. And if you're still holding back, I'm going to switch to tequila shots. I'm going to get it out of you. And when I find it, you probably will be a little bit shocked, maybe in disbelief. <laughs> probably gonna call me say i'm full of crap mm. but because people usually they overlook their their unique story mm. right like that the little the diamond in the rough like no everybody does that no you remember uh did you watch mad men please tell me you watched mm -hmm. mad men yeah absolutely yeah yeah so you remember i think it was the first season where they deal with the tobacco and they said it's roasted do you remember that mm -hmm. yeah 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 so you know like for our listeners right the guys they had the tobacco. Well, it was shot. What supposed to be in the sixties, early sixties, maybe late fifties, yeah, late fifties. Yeah. Something like that. And so everybody's smoking, of course, and they were about to lose this tobacco company. And, and Don Draper gets up there, you know, he's like, let me ask you something. How, how do you make your tobacco? You know? And the old, the old dad's like, well, you know, we grow it, we harvest it, you know, we cut it, you know, we put it in the, in the barn, whatever. And then, and then we roast it. And he's Don's writing with a chalk, you know, on a chalkboard. He says, it's roasted. And the dad's like, well, hell, everybody roasts their tobacco. He says, yeah, but you're the first one that's going to say it. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And they were just, they just totally overlooked the nuance. And that's what uh, an outsider, right? Can, can somebody inside their own business see this? Or does it usually take an outsider with like I, I think, neutral I mean, eyes? I, yes, they can. But I think it's, it, this is why you want to be talking to your customers. Because ultimately, you know, everyone, you've, you've got your, you've, you've got the clients who, who, who really look after you and you, you look after them, talk to them because they'll tell you, um, you know, they'll tell you why you're special. And then, and then once you understand why you're special, then you can go and start looking for the stories um, that you can tell. Um, so, you know, if you're the chiropractor, um, you know, the, the, your best clients might say, you know, what I love about you is you really care, Like you, you want to get me back out there. This is not just a transaction for you. And yeah. so you go, okay, so caring is my thing. So how do I tell that story? And then you need to go and you talk to your customers, like, where are these examples of where I care? Right. Um, do, do you think companies, people, they, they try to tell too much of a story? Like, like the chiropractor, like in a 30 second ad, right? If they mm -hmm. were running on the Super Bowl, and I would say, well, we help with migraines and recovery from surgery and yeah. back aches and carpal tunnel. And if you've been injured at work or if you're an athlete, we work on ankles, we work on knees, we work on elbows, we work on shoulders, we work on necks. You know, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of maybe just 
spend 30 seconds on just one thing, like how one person had carpal yeah. tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just tell their story for the whole, maybe even three minutes. Yeah. Right? A hundred percent. I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's to go back to that Tiananmen Square example, I'm sorry to use a sort of slightly political one, but like, you know, you could have, that could have been a collage of a hundred, a thousand different experiences that illustrate the, that one event. And yet, because it was just the one and it was, it was the, it was the right one. And it's really like very clear, very visually impactful. It's just so much more sticky. It's so much more memorable. Yeah. And so I would, yeah, I definitely look to, um, you know, find, find the one story, maybe find three stories, but like, but don't, don't try and do too much. I mean, right. you know, the, the great thing about the, the, the sort of social media world, the online world is like you, you everyone has a channel, their right. story. Um, and, you know, even if you're just using it in your sales meetings and saying, well, you know, this is why, this is why I'm special. Like that's where video really kind of resonates. Um, right. uh, so if you, yeah, you have the three stories, you have the, the mom who can pick up their toddler, you can have the, uh, the, the, I don't know, the, the dad who can, who can throw a ball with his son. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, maybe someone recovering from, an, from another injury. Um, you know, like illus illustrate that care, illustrate the thing that the clients say makes you special. Yeah. And I always tell people, you know, look, look at Apple. Um, I do this all the time in my training. I'll pull up their ads, their videos online, or just even on their own website and how they'll like, they'll start right. Like with the, the Apple watch, right there, they'll, they'll mm. start right there. They'll zoom in on the crown. Yeah. And then they kind of, then they zoom out, right. And show you the, like the, the, the nuances and I'm seeing more and more do it. I remember Mercedes, they've got the little, little trackpad thingy kind of hangs over. Right. And it's mm -hmm. a, but it's like a, the touch pad sort of yeah. thing, like a mouse yeah. pad. I remember they, one of their commercials, they started there and they just showed like the guy just moving and swiping his finger to control something on the, on the dashboard. Mm -hmm. And then they zoom out and showed the dashboard and showed the road. Right. Yeah. But they, it's something you can touch like, Oh yeah, I can, Oh, this is how I interact with my car now. Oh yeah. yeah. And then they tell the big picture, mm. you know, it's, it's all right in front of us, but we always tell people you got to detach. Notice what you notice. Yeah. Right. Like pause that commercial and say, why am I intrigued by this? Back it up. Mm. And it'll give you some insight into maybe how to run your own ads and own, own video. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you had a saying, uh, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Uh, and, and I guess like, in that instance, you know, with the, with the Mercedes touchpad, it's like, or, or, you know, or the, or the, or the, the bezel on the, uh, on the uh, Apple watch. It's like, guys, if they put that much engineering and thought and love and focus into that, then they're doing it into everything. Right. You know, and it's like, that's the amount of care that went into the suspension. That's the amount of care that went into the driving experience. And that's, that's the sort of, that's the implication. Like that's why it's so sort of, it's so engaging to, to, to really focus in on one thing. And it's like, and that's that kind of that magnifying glass method is like, you, you know, the, you're, you're given such an opportunity. There's such a power of the, of the niche or niche online. Um, and, you know, there'll always be an audience for, for people who, for whom, you know, the, the bezel on the iPhone is, is just, or on the, on the Apple watch is just, that is the thing that make that, that, that gets them going. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur and you've in your, your business is, you know, what, whatever your business is in, like, you know, just, you can be quite specialized in, in the stuff that you share, you know, yeah. don't try to be too general, general about the audience, you know, yeah. be very disciplined about who your best clients are and, and then make, make great videos for them. And, and if, if they love you, then other people will love you for the same reason. Yeah. And I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if it was like Frank Lloyd Wright, or if it's just one of those, what they call it, apocryphal stories, mm -hmm. but some engineer, architect, you know, a big bid for big project. Everybody's bringing in their balsa wood models, you know, careful to how they bring it in. And, and he just walks in with this like big, heavy, shiny brass hinge you know, and kind of slides it across the desk and they're like, what, what's that? You know, he says, 
these are the hinges we're going to use on every door. You know, this is the kind of quality that's going to go into every aspect of this building. You know, mm. like, all right, we'll take it. I could, they could hold it. They could see it. They could feel it. It became real. Yeah. You know, I, I sold, I sold computers for a long time and it was a new kind of computer and we were competing against Dell and all the others. And, but it, it's, it was in a closet. It was off the desk. It was like this esoteric kind of mm, thing, mm. but we had a little device that sat on their desktop. It was about the size of a VHS tape. And that's all I would carry into a demo, right? No PowerPoint, no projector, no fancy literature. Mm. And they could touch it, right? And I'm like, this is what's going to be on the desk. And like, there's nothing here. I'm like, exactly. No heat, no fan, nothing to be stolen, no RAM, no, like, it's secure. If mm. this is cheap, if they steal it, no big deal. Swap it out. They're back up and running. Like, oh, I get it. You know, and others are like, how are you selling this? We're going to do all these demos. We're flying engineers and, and VPs out. I'm like, man, y'all are, yeah. Y'all making yeah. this way too hard. Yeah, I think that the sort of the, the, the value of being incredibly specific is, uh, is is huge. I mean, I think when we first set up, like, you know, we, we came back from Mongolia and we had these cameras and, and, you know, we'd go and see people and they go, oh, so you guys make films? We go, yeah. And they go, what do you make films about? And we're like, everything. <laughs> and they go, okay, so can you make me a film about like promoting my garden center? You're like, yeah, sure. Can you make me a film uh, to recruit some new graduate trainees? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To everything. And like, and the problem with that is like, if you say yes to everything, then you kind of a set, you, you, you're really just saying no, or, or people just, they, they have no frame of reference. They can't put you into a box. Whereas, you know, similar kind of networking event, everyone was going around. They're like, who, who do you make films for? Or who, you know, who do you cut hair for? Um, and they're like, Oh, I'll cut hair for anyone with hair. And it's like, okay, sure. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and be really specific. And I stood up and I said, I want to talk to the marketing director of BMW UK. And someone at the front put their hand up and was like, oh, you know, my wife works in the marketing department at, at BMW. I'll right. get her to put you in touch. And I was just like, that is amazing. I could have made, I could have stood there and gone, yeah, well, we can make a film for, right. you want a film, I can make you a film. Um, right. and, and so, yeah, and I th- like, that's another thing, like, just you can be really specific about who, yeah. who you're, who you're. Well, and it doesn't limit you because the very next, maybe you go to a breakfast network and you ask for BMW. Okay. That was easy. So then at the lunch networking meeting, you say, yeah, I'm looking for the, for the VP of marketing at Mercedes, mm. you know? So, yeah. <laughs> cause yeah. you already got the BMW or you say, you know, I'm looking for the, uh, you know, the VP of marketing of Budweiser, right? Okay. Mm. Well, so hey, you're the Budweiser guy. You're the BMW guy. No, I'm the video guy. I'm just yeah. specific when I ask for my ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Right. Or, but do you, and you listed a bunch of big names when we mm-hmm. started and they're all obviously very different. Mm-hmm. Um, so are you just now known as the quality video company or do you still have a, a bit of a niche? Uh, so we do about 50% of our work is employer communications. So helping businesses to communicate with their staff. Um, so that could be anything from like raising awareness of recruitment campaigns through internal engagement um, and then even like, you know, building an alumni network for like, you know, big business services firm. Um, so that's sort of about half our work. And then the rest is B to B to B, B to C. So I hate to having, having said, yeah, we're incredibly specific uh, to sort of say, Oh yeah, actually, you know, we make films for all sorts of people. And you know, and ultimately it like being specific doesn't necessarily mean that you just exclude the whole market. Right. Um, you know, yes, we like the majority of our work is with, is with Fortune 500 companies, right? Um, and yeah, you know, like generally, I think where we compete is when you know it's not just the guy turning up and waving a video around. There's a bit of creative thought behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, we try to uh, yeah understand what the what the problem you're trying to solve is, or what the opportunity with the video is, and and then create something that will make people stop and go, oh yeah, I get it, okay, right. Um, so, so you wrote a book just last year, right? The new fire harness the new, power of video for your business. Yeah. Um, very cool. So then, yeah. So the, the reason I call it the new fire was, um, we discovered human man sort of tamed fire 400,000 years ago. Um, and that did two things. It allowed us to cook our food, which meant that we got a lot more nutrients from them, which meant our brain could start to grow. 
but then it also lengthened the day because if you don't have a fire when when the sun goes down you go to bed <laughs> and or you go into your cave and uh, so yeah we, it basically gave us the sort of the, the mental ability to tell abstract stories at the same time as giving us more time in which to tell those stories so um they did some, uh, they analyzed the speech patterns of the, the last hunter gatherer communities in, in Africa. And they found that, like, during the day, they speak very, very specific and targeted, very kind of operation, um, uh, very tactical conversation. Like, you know, where, where is the elephant? The elephant is over there. Where are the tigers over there? Don't go over there, go over there. Um, whereas in the evening, they talk far more, um, uh, they, they, you know people tell stories and they and, that, and that's how we always communicated and i like the sort of the the analogy with fire and the fact that fire spreads and particularly in the online world it's viral it can burn you but it can also give you light it can give you business light um and uh, and so yeah that's why that's why it's the new fire very nice and your website is casualfilms.com right mm -hmm. that's right yep Cool. So I'm linking to that. You've got offices in London, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and soon to be in Murrieta, California, huh? You, you need to open up here, man. This is a thriving metropolis. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be there. Certainly better weather than we're having all the week. You know what? Hey, I, I'll lead your Texas branch. I want to get back. So I'll open the Austin office. All right. And look at me, man. I'm pretty. I should be on camera. Yeah, done. Done. Uh, we'll, we'll set you up. We'll set you off over there. There has been talk about Austin, actually. So, uh, you can fit right in. I know, man. I, I I got the accent. All right. I can eat the barbecue. It's, I mean, I'm telling you, we got, we got big things happening in Texas. So, so we got to talk. Good. Done. Let's, uh, let's talk. Very nice. All right. So we are linking to the book and your website. So Nick Francis, all the way from SF, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Wes. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Have a great day. Cheers. You too. All the best. Thanks. I got to hit cancel good thing nick is better with video than i am at finding the end button so i decided to leave that in but uh hey i hope you got a lot out of that um as you can tell he's just a straight shooter those are the kind of people i always have on right uh, you know find your story go deep on one story uh, like we talked about illustrate how you care how you do anything is how you do everything be specific Man, I've, I've talked about this for years and years and years. You know, I built a nice business with nice residual income selling CRMs and marketing automation software because I approached it as an end user. I was not a coder. I'm still not a coder. When others were clamoring about to do advanced API work and design work with Infusionsoft and other tools, I couldn't do all that. So I, as I learned the software, I made short, specific video tutorials and blog posts on how to achieve a goal, right? How to do something very simple. People, you know, it's, it's interesting. They, they won't watch a one hour video, you know, very few will, but they'll watch 12, five minute videos, right? Or 20, three minute videos. Because if you're giving them something, it, we're success-oriented, goal-oriented as human beings. And so they do a little, watch a little three-minute video, boom, boom, boom. They go apply it, go, oh, wow, that worked great. Now we want to do it again. And so, but it's hard sometimes. It's, you know, the curse of knowledge is real. You, you know a whole lot about a subject, so you want to go super deep because you're passionate about it. But, you know, the old adage is you must enter the conversation going on in the mind of the prospect. Do they want to go that deep? Do I want to know how a watch is made or do I just want to know what time it is? That's what you've got to figure out, okay? If you need help with that, hit me up. That's what I do, among many things, helping businesses, salespeople, sales managers uh, drill down on their key message, drill down on the key talking points that should be brought up in a sales conversation. I help the marketing folks as well because sales and marketing are just two sides of the same coin. All right, marketing is just selling in print. So if you are too close to your business, which you probably are because we all are, hit me up. I'd love to help. As I mentioned uh, at the top of the show, I'm working on a new thing 
by the time this episode goes out, at least the fundamental pieces will be put together, but it's called The Vault. I'm taking all of my content, uh, Seven Deadly Sins of Selling, the uh, Better Prospecting System, which stands for Bonding, Empathy, Trust, and Rapport, uh, all of the Make Every Sale videos, uh, and a bunch of other things that I've not released um, publicly, you know, work I've done for clients and turned around and made a product out of it, um, CDs like Making Good Money in Bad Time, I'm putting it all in one place, and you can get all of it for one price. So head on over to the saleswhisper.com slash vault, V-A-U-L-T, and check that out. I'm going to do a little introductory offer here as I roll this out. Um, but all the video is up. It's um, hosted securely on Vimeo. I may pull it into my actual website. But uh, the main thing is you're going to get access to it. And then you can ask questions in the implementors. So that's our free Facebook group where you can come hang out. Okay. So please check that out. Let me know what you think. Uh, scoop up a charter membership because as I create more content, I will put more stuff there. So this is for folks that want to continue learning from me, uh, but maybe you don't have the money for private coaching. Uh, so this will be uh, quite affordable compared to how I've done things in the past uh, because it's going to be all in one place, all digital. And, you know, you can won't be any phone calls, so you're going to miss out on that. But if you are curious about going deep with me, um, all the content's there for, for go-getters, okay, including the workbook from my sales training program that um, it's included in the higher-end coaching. So go get you some, all right? TheSalesWhisper.com slash vault. Thanks for listening. I'll go sell something. <laughs>